Hi, it's T with T Quilts, and I'm here today to work on my swap blocks from 2020. those of you that may not be aware we actually made swap blocks in 2020 that were crumb blocks that had our name and location inside of the actual center square and then we added a black frame just so that we could have something for people to square those blocks up with so I'm going to show you what I'm doing with these blocks and walk you through my process so I have already started my process and then as I was working on this I'm actually on row number three of six this is uh, I have three rows already completed and I'm actually working on the fourth row here so I decided maybe I should do a video on this now I don't want to pull out any names in particular where blocks are not correct according to the swap we had a swap that had very limited rules uh, basically this center piece had to be 10 inches squared up this piece here should have been uh, with your name and city state on it and then you had to put a two inch frame around the outside and I'm finding that when I put my ruler on here if this was 10 and a half squared up I'm finding that this is bigger than 10 inches when it's sold in and that is by no means picking out a particular block this is actually my friend's block here and she has passed away this year so I am in no way picking on somebody's block but I'm just letting you know that you know things happen I think what happened with some people has happened to more than one is that they forgot to square up this center section before they put the frame on the setting that I'm using does need for my blocks to be the right size however I'm just going ahead anyway and using all of my blocks and then the excess that's going to be at the bottom I'm actually just going to chop it off once I sew the blocks into rows I don't care about the width uh, but the um, top and bottom height is more important than anything else so I will be chopping off the bottom on some blocks when they're too long so what am I doing I'm actually tilting these blocks and I'm tilting blocks left and I'm tilting blocks right so for this block here let me make sure <laughs> I have lost track of my blocks see I've got one two three this is four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is block number four. And it should be tilted left. So in order for me to tilt my block left, that means that I am going to go from wide point to quarter inch at the top so when I'm saying quarter inch at the top I don't have a lot of room here to work with what I'm doing is I'm putting my quarter inch seam here so that it's just off the seam line up at the top and then I'm just angling down to the corner so quarter inch up here down to the corner down here so I just trim that one block then I turn it one quarter turn and now I know I'm going from wide point to quarter inch 
this time I want to put a line on my ruler just so that I know I'm cutting something that's going to have straight edges I don't care if they're all the same size because apparently they're not going to be um, so I'm just making sure that I have my straight line here on the edge of what I just trimmed and also that I have my quarter inch up here on the away from that seam line and then I trim and what happens is when I'm trimming I'm leaving the quarter inch here so when I sew it into the seam it would be having the space for that seam allowance to come in so again I'm putting my ruler up on the line down here and then I just slide back until I'm comfortable where my quarter inch is and I cut that off again ruler on the line slide over until I'm about a quarter inch away still lined up down here quarter inch away up there and then I trim Okay, so this is what I call a left facing block the block I just did let me turn this right side up the block that I just completed is a right facing block and so you can see how the two big ends are together so what I'm doing is I'm alternating left facing and right facing so my next cut is going to be a right facing block right facing block I start with quarter inch down here and go out to the corner just an angle out to the end and then I trim so we're trimming in the opposite direction so one quarter putting my ruler on the end here make sure I've got my one quarter in to the corner again ruler down here on the line get my one quarter so I can see that and then just trim and again do that one more time quarter inch in the corner and trim so now I have just trimmed a right uh, tilting block okay so I'm just going to keep doing that alternating my um, this is a right tilting block I don't know if I said left or right but this is a right tilting block and now I want to do my left where my left is the quarter inch up at the top so I'm just repeating this process for all the blocks so I'll just put you on fast forward while I trim these last two blocks and then we'll come back and show you my next step So I have seven blocks that I'm actually putting into a row here and so all I'm going to do now is just take these seven blocks and I am going to sew them right sides together block to block and I just wanted to show you that these blocks are not the same size so I'm just going to sit this block here you can see where I've got more here um, a little bit shorter there so they are not like square blocks at all and that's because the centers are varying in different sizes and so um, I am just going to go ahead and put these blocks together a little bit short here and I think this block here must be more than 10 inches in the middle yeah it's a little bit it's like 10 and 1 eighth here but 10 and a fourth on the other end so yeah 
I am not going to stretch and make them fit because what I'm going to do once I sew these into a row is I'm just going to make me a straight row. So basically, I'm just going to go sew all of these together into one long row and then I'll come back and show you that. So I'm back and I have sewn my blocks into rows. And you can see where my pieces are making this wedge shape. You can also see on the bottom where some blocks are longer than others. And I'm just going to square those ends up even with the next block. You can see how my block here is a little bit shorter than a longer block here that had that was larger than 10 inches. So I'm just going to make sure I put a line on my ruler on my seam line and then make sure that I come down to the edge of my quilt block and I'm just going to square that up we're just going to chop it off that also means that I'm losing my quarter inch that I had down here but I've got a little trick for that that I'm going to show you in the next step so I have other blocks though that I need to um, put into rows before I can show you my next step so I will come back with that so just trimming everything straight here as straight as I can if I lose points it's okay <laughs> and this one here And the last little section here. Line on my seam line. little bit off okay so we've got this row squared up it is now ready for my next step which I will show you I have two more rows to do so now it's time for the fun part math <laughs> and I know a lot of people don't like math but in quilting if you want your products to be square you do need to do a little math. So I have taken all of my strip sets here and I have measured them and I have six strip sets. So the measurements I took were the width of my strip sets which they are 12 and 1 quarter inches so that's the width from top to bottom and then my length, my row length they are various because the blocks were different sizes so what I did was I first just went through each strip and measured it and so for my strip number one it measured 82 and a quarter for my strip number two 81 and a half my strip number three was 85 my strip number four was 82 then strip number five is 82 and a half and then strip number six is the same as row number two, 81 and a half. So you can see how not squaring up the blocks before this black sashing frame was put on the block made a big difference in how these items actually squared up. So I didn't care what they squared up. I just sewed my blocks together into rows and then I just cut my rows to 12 and one half inches high. Now comes the math. Okay. So since these rows are all different sizes, and I also know that I want to put a 2 inch finished strip on the, each side of the row, I have to do some math. So what I have starred here is my largest row, which is 85 inches. So when I come over here, I take, if I put 4 to that being 2 on each side, then I know that my row will be 89 
and I also want to make sure that I have that extra half inch seam allowance which is not here already so I've added that to my 85 so I'm adding what I want it to finish which is four inches plus I want that extra seam allowance so in essence I'm actually adding 4.5 so what I do is I take what I want my rows to be, which is 89.5, and then I subtract what the actual size of my row is currently, which is 4.5 difference. So taking 85 from 89.5, I have a 4.5 difference. I take that 4.5 difference and divide it by 2. And that measurement equals two and one quarter inches. Now, forget that when we slice something in half, we also have to add the seam allowance back. So the reason why I slice this in half for two is that I want to put a strip on the left and a strip on the right. So when I do that, I need to add that 0.5 seam allowance that I'm going to need when I take up the seam on each side. So in essence, I'm going to be cutting a sh something that's two and three quarter inches. So it's going to be always 12 and one quarter by whatever measurement I need to make this row equal 89.5. So that's row number three. I started with row number three because it was my longest row uh, when I did my measurements. Okay, so now I can skip up and do row number one. And I'm just going to do this one more time just so that we understand the math. My row number one measured 82 and a quarter edge to edge. No seam allowance, just edge to edge. I know that I want my row to equal 89.5. This is going to be the constant for each row. So what we're going to do is subtract 82 and a quarter from 89.5. That gave me 7 and 1 quarter. Over here, I took 7 and 1 quarter, divided it by 2. It ended up being 3.625. I took that measurement and added 0.5 seam allowance and now I have 4.125 the equivalent of 4 and 1 eighth so this is what I need to cut for each side of my strip number one so that it comes up to 89.5 I will do that for all of my rows now remembering that this number here whatever number you come up with you've got to cut two of these one for the left of the strip and one for the right of the strip so i just did some calculations and found that i need to have fabric wise at least 48.25 inches of fabric so i've already cut strip sets here so let me zoom you out i've cut a couple of strip sets that are 12 and 1 quarter which is the height of my row so I've cut a strip set 12 and 1 quarter and it's still folded I've just taken the salvage edge off over here and then what I'm going to do is leave it folded and I'm just going to make one cut for each row that I need and when I'm making that one cut it's going to automatically make the second cut for me so I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'm going to sew those strips to the corresponding row. And then once that's done, I will come back and show you the next step. So when I actually come back, I'll already have these cut strip sets sewn onto each side of the row. All right, quilters, I've done my sewing. I've got my side pieces on. My rows now are 89 and a half inches long. I have six of them. I originally was going to put these rows all together and then I had to trim off the bottom edges on some of the blocks like right there and so what I'm going to do so that it's not obvious when the quilt top is put together is I'm now going to go cut two and a half inch sashing strips 
and put them in between each of these rows. So that is my next step. I will do that and come back. So it's kind of, it's, so in all honesty, I got meetings tonight, so it probably will be tomorrow that I will work on this. I will probably cut today, but I'm not sure if I will have all of it sewn together today, because that's going to be the biggest job I've had to do thus far. I've got about two yards of fabric, and I'm going to cut lengthwise strips from that but I still have to connect those strips to make them long enough to go through all the rows and I'm going to do that on the bottom and the top as well I'm going to add strips and on the top and bottom I may make it a little bit bigger so that I can make this 89 and a half inches square when I'm done that's what I think I'm going to do we shall see when I come back guys I started working on this quilt in August and apparently I did not do any recording in the month of September at all <laughs> so in the video I actually left off with these being pieced and I just wanted to show you that I do have these this whole quilt top pieced with this sashing row that I was telling you I added the two and a half inch strip down the middle so that I could space it in places where I actually had to chop off the black in some of the people's blocks because of size of block. So the only thing I got to do for this quilt now is I need to remeasure it because I've forgotten the measurements now and I just need to make it so that it's a 96 inch square uh, so I can have it for my bed. But I just wanted to come back and show you that this quilt top is indeed done. I just will not be able to put this on my deck at almost 1 a.m. in the morning <laughs> but I wanted to get this video done so I will see you all um, in I guess my September completions video but this I will add when I add the border since it's now January I'll have a quilt top showing in the January completions video see you all next time thank you all so much for watching Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Share my channel with your other quilting friends, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye, T-Quilters. Stay blessed.